insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 34 uh, lose the fountain, save the water. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and wonderful co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today, dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. <laughs> Having um, some technical difficulties. Yeah, you know, you, you change when you change the setup around here sometimes, uh, things that you thought worked don't work right don't off the bat. <laughs> Uh, so you, you have to go through and troubleshoot those little gremlins. Maybe one day we'll have to do like a blooper reel. We'll just like set the camera up and just let it record. Maybe and... one day things will actually just work the way they're supposed oh, to. Oh, what's the fun in that? So this week on Disney Detective, <clears throat> we talk about some preserving the holy water from the fountain <laughs> at Epcot. Uh, oh, water. We have a, uh, a, a look at... Freeform's star-studded Star Wars Galaxy's Edge uh, special. Uh, Jamie Lynn uh, Sigler is going to be playing Disney's first Jewish princess. We'll talk about that. Um, then in our entertainment news, we will talk about the anointing of a new queen on the crown. We will talk about what was in the news previously with uh, the HBO special of the Michael Jackson documentary uh, that's moving forward in the courts. Uh, the unfortunate news uh, that Jonathan Van Ness of Queer Eye uh, has tested positive for HIV. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, then we'll talk about Will Smith and uh, his sort of giving back and uh, his anti-bullying efforts. And then, as usual, we will sum up with our insightful picks of the week. So, we got a pretty full show today. We sure do. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. All righty. Go for Disney Detective. So, as we had been talking about with the news from D23 and all the revamping of Epcot, one of the you know big changes was um, the Fountains of the Nation, um, right when you would um, exit Spaceship Earth, has been demolished or will be mostly uh, uh, will be demolished at some point in time they've already started uh, the deconstruction of it because they're going to totally redo that area but what they actually did was collected all of the water to use in uh, the future for the reimagination of the park. So they had Epcot's vice president and Walt Disney Imagineering's executive um, join with two current Epcot cast members for the collection. And what was kind of neat was on the park's opening day in 1982, delegations from all of the nations that were represented in Epcot in the World Showcase actually had water from each of their countries to pour into the fountain. So that's kind of, you know, why they want to... Surprised they were able to get that through customs. <laughs> I, well, you know, it was 1982, so back then it, yeah, it was uh, things true. were a little bit easier. Um, so actually what was kind of neat was that for the collection, the Walt Disney Archives brought out the vessels from Switzerland and from Mexico's delegations to use once more. So that was kind of cool because they had done like something 
kind of ceremonial. Right. So this was, you know, kind of the collection of it. Um, so there's no word on what water feature they collected the water, what would be used for. But as more information, you know, comes around. We'll so we're, we're to believe that water that was put in there in 1982 is the same symbolic water that arrived from around the world. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, in of Florida, because there's no rain, there's no evaporation. Right. No, all of there were probably still some molecules that were left. If I go to there. Disney and I see little vials of fountain water being <laughs> that sold, you can, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna lose it. I really am. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very Disney-like. Is what that, that would be would very be. Disney-like. Or pieces of brick. Yeah, you know? that's I'm true. I'm surprised yeah. they, they, you know. Well, and because I'm, they already charged you once for the brick. Now they're going to grind well, them yeah, up and, and sell you the Yeah, and that's the whole thing is the bricks that were, you know, all around the Magic Kingdom and, and right. you know, the Ticket and Transit, you know, uh, Ticket and Transportation Center, you know, those they basically just demolished and you know they yeah. didn't let the people buy back well, you there you could get a miniature you could get a miniature version. version or if you never got a brick and wanted to get a pretend brick you could you right. could do that too but yeah you couldn't you weren't allowed to get your brick back that's Disney. yeah well so anyway uh <laughs> freeform is going to be giving us some insights into galaxy's edge tell us about that yeah this was something that was kind of cool so you know if you weren't able to make it to disney world or disneyland to see star wars galaxy's edge in person for the channel freeform which used to be disney family back in the day um is ha was filming a uh special that's going to be airing uh on their channel uh later um this month actually on do, 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 when is it supposed to air oh on uh september 29th at 8 p.m um and it's a star-studded um comical you know adventure obviously um so neil patrick harris is hosting it. Um, it's also going to feature uh, Modern Family's Sarah Hyland from The Big Bang Theory, uh, Kelly Kokum, uh, Key and Peele's uh, Keegan Michael Key is going to be in it. Uh, Jay Leno has a, a part, um, and you know a couple of other uh, celebrities along with the cast members. And basically, you kind of find you know they're making their way through Batu. Uh, you get. You know, a sneak peek, obviously, of the ride um, and, you know, some of the, the other areas like the cantina um, and, and the shops and stuff um, get to go on Smuggler's Run. And then there is a sneak peek, you know, preview of the Rise of the Resistance ride, which obviously will be opening um, later up uh, later uh, this year in Disney World and in Disneyland in January. Um, so if, you know, th they usually put together a nice little show to kind of give you that little taste, you know, of, of what it's like to be there. So so are they going to have Bob Iger there flubbing his lines again this time like they <laughs> did for the premiere? No, probably not. I, I think that's what, you know, that makes Disney seem charming when you're right, $156 when he... million dollar a year CEO can't get his lines right. Yeah, well, we'll see. So, so set your DVRs and uh, it premieres on Sunday, September 29th, again at 8 p.m. on Freeform. So I'm curious if the Jay Leno segment's going to be like a Jay Leno's garage and they go see like the speeder yeah, bike Yeah, yeah, he's like, like hey, you know, I don't have one of these in my garage. I could, yeah. I could use one of those. Yeah, that, that, would, that would be kind of funny. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So what do we have next year? So this was a, a cute little story that I had actually heard on the radio, and then this was kind of a follow-up. So actress uh, Jamie Lynn Ziegler um, announced this week that she was going to be providing the voice of Disney's first Jewish princess. Well, the news kind of didn't go over so well because Sarah Silverman kind of disagreed. Uh, Ziegler had shared her excitement at providing the voice of a character of a Disney princess from a Latino Jewish kingdom who will be reportedly appearing on an upcoming Hanukkah-themed episode of the Disney Junior show Elena of Avalor. So, um, you know, while a writer for the animated series backed up uh, Ziegler's tweet, Silverman responded, um... That's because the former I Love You America host believes that her character from the 2012 
Wreck-It Ralph movie, a princess exiled named Vanellope, uh, Vanellope is being overlooked. Silverman told Yahoo Entertainment back in November of 2018 that her character in the movie was Jewish, just like her, and that she noted that she and her character have the same coloring, she's feisty, she says what's on her mind, and she's even a little pushy. And at that time, the movie's directors, Rich Moore and Phil Johnson, actually agreed with Silverman, saying um, that, you know, yeah, she, you know, Vanellope technically was a Jewish princess. Um, So they said, uh, so in fact, Moore actually weighed in on Ziegler's post about voicing the first Disney princess, telling her that she wasn't, but welcome to the family. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, but no. Yeah, thank you, but no. Um, But fans, you know, and that a lot of fans on Twitter were actually behind, you know, Silverman and quickly, you know, noticed, you know, Ziegler's post and also paid tribute to you know, Vanellope as well. Um, one Twitter user actually said, we're getting another Jewish princess. I'm going to cry. Uh, growing up, Rugrats was my only Jewish holiday special. Thank you, Rugrats. <laughs> I'm so happy that my daughter will get more representation. So let me, you know, just jog my memory for me. Was that part of the storyline in Wreck-It Ralph? No, it, it wasn't. And that's And I think that's kind of the point is that she just happened to be Jewish. It wasn't, right. they never talked about it. They never brought it up. It was just like, oh, well, since Sarah Silverman was Jewish and her character was very So we've gotten much, to the point that we're inferring characteristics on fictional characters right. that the actress or the actor happens to possess. Right, right. Whereas in, you know, this episode, it's actually going to be a holiday-themed right, right. special where they're, you know, obviously going to talk about Hanukkah and the different things that go on with the holiday. So, yeah, I, I see, you know, more so the, the, the Twitter you user, uh, you know, who, you know, the mom who's all excited that her daughter, you know, has another Hanukkah special to watch. And, you know, know. in the grand scheme of things, does it matter who's first? The fact that you're seeing this diversification Mm -hmm. injected into the Disney storylines, I think, is really what the important Mm -hmm. takeaway is. Absolutely. Absolutely. That every, you know, everybody out there, no matter your skin color, your hair color, you know, there's something There's that you can to relate identify to. with. Right. Yeah, I right. think that's great. And, yeah. You know, as much as I love to come on here and bash Disney all the time. It's kind of know, a sweet, I, I you have know. to I have to pat them on the back for, for their diversity efforts. Yeah. So, okay. So, I think that is all we had for... That was it for Disney Detectives. Disney, so, nothing to really bust on Bob Iger for. I was week. trying. I, I really was trying hard because okay. I know how much you love to talk about him. Okay. There was nothing. Sorry. You know what? We need him to appear on, like, Dancing with the Stars <laughs> just to really showcase his skills. Okay. Oh, anyway, goodness. so we'll move on to our entertainment news. Then. Let's do that. So a show that we both know and love is coming back. Yes, Tell us about we that. have been anticipating the return of season three of The Crown. Um, it will be hitting Netflix on November seventeenth. Um, we've seen some some teasers uh, of, of photos and things. Um, you know, there was one. Um, uh, teaser trailer where it was basically just her walking by, you know, Queen Elizabeth walking by, nothing, you know, beyond that. This is really the f- the the biggest teaser, you know, trailer that we had. And what was kind of interesting is they show, you know, two stamps. They show show an older stamp with the original actress who played Queen Elizabeth, Claire Foy, and then they show the new Queen. Um, you know, um, Olivia, uh, Coleman as the new queen. And it's, it's a very witty little banter, uh, that, that kind of goes back. Um, you know, basically, uh, one of the advisors is saying is everybody is delighted with the new portrait, which we, they feel is an elegant reflection of her majesty's transformation from young woman to, and she jumps in and says, old bat. (laughs) And it's just, you can tell she's a very, this is the witty, right. you know, queen, yeah. you know. 
So how um, many how many years forward is this jumping now? So now this um, is basically the the sixties to the seventies. Okay, is this time frame? Um, so obviously, you know, it's a, a big jump, um, but. She she looks really, you know, she looks good. And it, it was a nice little transition to, you know, to see the, the difference of of the two. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it you know, you got a full new cast. You know, her sister um, is being played by Helena Bonham Carter. Um, and then uh, Tobias um, um, Menzies is uh, playing Duke Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Um, Edinburgh. Duke yeah, Edinburgh. thank you. <laughs> um, so it, it's a you know whole new cast, uh, you know, for the main characters, which a lot of people you know were kind of upset for. But it, you know, they they kind of explained, you know, we have to jump forward. We don't want to put too much makeup on our yeah, actors, it's, and that's the thing. Like you it's, know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing that you don't see very often. Where in order to show. And kudos to them for wanting to show the actual mm -hmm. progression of time. Right, right. You're replacing your entire cast. Right, and they had said that every two seasons they would, you know, the idea is that the, I think the overall plan was for six seasons overall. So, you know, every two seasons the cast is going to, you know, change. Right. So Interesting. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Very cool. What is next? Tell us about the Michael Jackson issue. So this was a story that we talked about. That just won't die at this yeah, point. Yeah, it was months ago about um, the Michael Jackson estate wanted to file a lawsuit against HBO. Um, and so now a judge tentatively uh, ruled on Thursday that will allow Michael Jackson's estate to continue with its $100 million lawsuit against HBO for airing the documentary Leaving Neverland. A U.S. district judge is expected to file his final decision at the end of September. Uh, the Jackson estate filed the lawsuit against HBO in February on the grounds that the Leaving Neverland documentary violated the terms of a non uh, disparagement clause of a 1992 argument that granted HBO the right to air the video from his or to air any sort of video from his dangerous tour. Uh, HBO filed the motion in August asking for the estate law, the estate's lawsuit to be dismissed, citing First Amendment. Um, and the documentary details accusations uh, that were made by two people that Jackson had sexually assaulted them when they right. were children. Um, so the estate will never stop until justice has been uh, obtained, uh, said the representative from Jackson's estate. Uh, the attorney for Jackson's estate told uh, the rap.com, I hope and we believe uh, he will adopt his tentative order. We're waiting to see the judge's final decision. Uh, Jackson had died in 2009. Um, and he constantly denied any wrongdoing and was acquitted of child mus mol molestation in his criminal trial in 2005. What I think is funny is the uh, statement from the Jackson camp that they will continue to pursue this until justice has been right. seen. Okay, justice for who? Right. So you've got you've got a movie out there from people who have been allegedly victimized mm -hmm. by Michael Jackson. And, and not trying, just one person. Right. You, it's a group of people. And they are trying to put their story out there so that, so that their side can be heard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want to talk victims, I think if you want to look at victims on a scale of 1 to 10, the people that were assaulted here probably have a much higher claim to victim. Mm-hmm than an estate whose reputation might get car tarnished right. by the questionable actions of the family member. Right. So when you say you're pursuing justice, let's put justice into perspective in this Right, one. right. So we'll see how this goes. I, clearly this isn't leaving the news anytime soon. No, no, no. It'll be be there for a while. And our next story here. So this was actually something that just came out uh, today, actually. Uh, Queer Eye star Jonathan Van Ness is going public about his past drug use, HIV positive status, and being sexually abused as a child. Uh, the reality TV personality sat down with the New York Times for an interview that was published on Saturday um, that 
is actually coming out right before the release of his memoir, Over the Top. He said, it's hard for me to be as open as I want to be, and there are certain things I haven't really shared publicly, um, adding that there are issues that n- just need to be talked about. Vaness, who is 32, reveals in his book that he was actually diagnosed with HIV at 25 after feigning at a hair salon and going to Planned Parenthood to be treated for what he thought was the flu at the time. Uh, he says that day was just as devastating as you would think it would be, he writes in the book. He says by going public, he hopes to dispel some of the myths about being HIV positive. He said when Queer Eye came out, it was really difficult because I was like, do I want to talk about my status? He explains. And then I was like, well, the Trump administration has gone, uh, has done everything they can to have the stigmatism of the LGBT community thrive around me. He says that he also reveals in the book that he was uh, molested as a child from an older boy that went to his church. Uh, He says, for a lot of people who are survivors of sexual assault at a young age, we have a lot of compound trauma. Uh, He details the trauma and engaging in risky behavior, which includes smoking methamphetamines and spending his allowance money his mom sent him while he was in college to buy cocaine. Um, Rather than asking for more money, he actually turned to a gay website uh, that you could chat and do personal ads and advertise for sex for money. So he really kind of hit, hit bottom. Right. Uh, he obviously, f- you know, ended up flunking out of college his first year, and he later realized that hairstyling was his calling and then enrolled in beauty school and kind of that's where he, his thing, you know, everything kind of turned around. Uh, he says that he has cleaned up his act and hasn't done hard drugs in years. Uh, his book, which is called Over the Top, will be out on September 24th. Um, and I am a fan of his. I'm, I'm a fan of 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 the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all of the, the cast members have, have done such a great job being so positive and being out there. Um, and I think it was very courageous of him to to come out with this because I think it would have come out eventually, some tabloid you know, would have found something to bring it to light. Um, you know, he, he just has such an, uh, a positivity about him that makes you want to be a better person, no matter who you are. Right. Um, so just to see him be, you know, I, I actually read some of the article from the New York Times because this story uh, was actually from Deadline.com. Uh, but the actual article is on the New York Times.com. And, you know, you, you just it, it's raw, you know, and, and he realizes he had to, you know, kind of face his fears and, you know, hopes that, again, bringing all of this out is going to help you know well, others and, and you know it's unfortunate it's tragic that mm-hmm. that he's been you know that he has is suffering from it but it, it's not a death sentence and today. that's and that's really and you know that stigmatism he, that was right. there just yeah, 10 look years at, ago is you know there. look at um magic johnson magic johnson's he's, a great example he's you know when everybody found out that he was hiv positive Everyone's like, well, that's it. He's done for it. Because unfortunately, so many other people that came before him, as soon as you found out about it, it was a death sentence. And and in in all honesty, for a lot of people, it still is because the Mm -hmm. treatments are very expensive. Right, right. Uh, When a a well-known celebrity like this comes out, you know at least they can afford the treatments for it. Right, right. Um, But, you know, my heart breaks for... Mm-hmm. The, the individuals people. who can't afford right that. yeah the um, everyday person yeah. who who can't yeah. yeah so but again it's it's not as you know the mortality of it isn't as, sure. as great well and as it's it, you know the fact that it's as mainstream in the medical studies now mm-hmm. whereas you know you look in the 80s when it mm-hmm. when it first came out like society refused to even acknowledge it mm-hmm. for the longest time. Oh yeah, you know, look 
you know, people would get death threats and, yeah. you know, people would be fired from their You'd job yeah. and, yeah. you know, nobody would, would want to talk about it and nobody would want to, you know, be near you if yeah, they knew. it was like they you were knew. a leper almost. Right, right. Because you, know, you could catch it just from by sitting next to somebody. Right, and now the treatments now can, can reduce the viral mm-hmm. count so low that you affect, effectively don't transmit it anymore. Right, right. And I, I think there's even a, a commercial that I've heard on the radio a couple of times that talks about, you know, that there are certain, you know, being on certain medications now that there are certain blood tests where yep. you don't test positive, doesn't even, doesn't even you know, it show what up I, anymore. What so. I did think was odd about the story was who goes to Planned Parenthood when you think you have the flu? Well, the, and that is that normal. Well, when you have, and that's the thing is P- Planned Parenthood has a, a stigma of being, you know, that's where women go to get abortions. When but is it? A, is it? I, I didn't realize they provided like a full regular health care. That's and that's where not to go off on a tangent, but that's where a lot of women would go just for their regular health checkups. Right. Okay. So you know, if you're somebody that doesn't have insurance, and you know, you figure he was he was 25 at the time, he was working in a salon. You know, probably, again, didn't have insurance. And it was probably before there was an urgent care on every corner. Right. And that's where where you went. It wasn't, you know, they they took a care of whoever, you know. That's, I just, I never, yeah. I never knew it as mm-hmm. a full service medical facility. That's yeah. All. Yeah, it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Will Smith... Doesn't like bullies. Tell us about this. (laughs) Yeah. So in a surprise appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show on Friday, uh, the actor greeted three Memphis high school students, Christopher, Antoine, and Michael, whose video showing them standing up to bullying quickly went viral. Christopher explained to Ellen that he and Antoine, who barely knew the bullied student, gifted Michael with some new clothes after students in the school were mocking him uh, for repeating his outfits, while Christopher admitted he was also laughing, uh, also laughing alone when Michael was made fun of, his reflection later that night prompted the change of heart. Uh, he said, "Once I went home and thought about it, I wanted to apologize to Michael, but I wanted to give him something in the apology." Christopher told Ellen. Uh, Michael added that he was really surprised, shocked, and happy, and tried to keep a straight face instead of showing uh, my smile during the heartwarming moment, uh, sharing, it was the best day of my life because I was bullied for my entire life. So the video had gone viral and it caught the attention of many celebrities, uh, DeGeneres noted, including Will Smith, who then stepped out on stage uh, and said, I saw the video and it was me and Jada and we're sitting around and I was like, this is fantastic. There's no way that I'm letting this pass by without making contact with these kids. Uh, So we actually, you know, sat down with the boys. Uh, He said, what you did uh, felt small to you, but I promise that it is exact. It is exactly how human beings are supposed to interact with one another. He told the boys, it's not more complicated than that. Someone is having a hard time and you helped them. It's that simple. Yeah. Um, uh, then he went on and said, uh, what was really big also was the self-correct, Smith said. He said, adding that, you know, because of Christopher's turnaround, you saw that you were laughing and that you were part of it and you stopped and self-corrected. So uh, Smith celebrated the boy's kind gesture by rewarding all three of them with a swag bag from his upcoming secret merch line. He said, I talked to the people at New Balance and this is an act of kindness that I don't want to soon be forgotten. We're going to get you some gear for everyone at your school, all 600 kids at your school, he shared, uh, with the school leaders applauding in the audience. DeGeneres also chimed in with her gift of $10,000 for each of the students, courtesy of Shutterfly. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's nice. It's it's always nice when you see um, young adults who have the wherewithal to do this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it happens in reality, it usually goes unrecognized right. and, and unrewarded, mm-hmm. um, to have a celebrity like Will Smith, who has always been one to give oh, back yeah. to the community, yeah. uh, just to, to have him see this and, and start the, the drive, mm-hmm. uh, to, to pat these kids on the back. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great thing. You know, yeah. And, is, and 
you know, while we didn't talk about the story because it wasn't really an entertainment related story, there was, you know, the young student, um, you know, the fourth grader who, you know, it, the story was making the rounds who, you know, got bullied in his school in Florida because he made, right. you know, a, a drawing of the University, University of, of Tennessee, Tennessee. Um, because it was college t-shirt day or something right, and he didn't right. have the shirt but he you know he was a fan of their their football team made a shirt got bullied the news got to the university of tennessee so they ended up sending him a whole bunch of swag whole bunch of t-shirts then they took his logo that he made and made shirts yeah. And everybody in the University of Tennessee was wearing them along with, you know, people that could go and buy the shirts and the money was going towards an anti-bullying campaign. And then what they, what else did they do? They said, hey, you know what? You got a full ride to a yeah. four year uh, scholarship as long as, you know, you pass all your entrance exams. College is on us because yeah. that's the kind of spirit you know, we and, want. And to be so. honest, that and and what um, Will Smith and Ellen did with these kids, mm-hmm. it's a it's a great feel good story. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly generous, but you don't. It, these are the exceptions, right? Right, because you know you don't need to have this kind of outpouring, right? To just if you do could something take good, this kind of outpouring, right. and spread it across a hundred kids. Mm-hmm. Then those kids are then encouraged to spread it on to other kids. Right. And that's how you. You need to start society. the the movement. You right. know, like the whole, um, you know, the whole thing that's going on with the climate control and yep. all of the the kids that are are walking out of school and and doing protests because this is their world that they you know that they're we're gonna inherit. they're going to inherit and they don't want it being messed up. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see. Th- this younger generation stepping forward and, you know, and, and in this day and age of, you know, social media and everybody has, you know, a camera and, and can record something on their phone real quick, you know, now you're, you're seeing it. And maybe to the kid that's in Idaho that sees, you know, the same type of thing. Okay. Maybe he's not going to get a thousand, you know, a thousand dollars for doing good, but realizes you know what? If they can, you know, stand up for somebody, I can stand up for right. for somebody else. And, and that's exactly and start my it that point, way. Is that? Yeah. You know, this is how society turns around. You look at the media now. You see mm-hmm. all the negativity and the mm-hmm. hate and the right. violence around the world, and and you want to change that. Right. And the way to change that is is with gestures like mm-hmm. this. Just not not crazy. You know, right. over the top stuff. Just, right. Being a decent human mm-hmm. being. Right. Do it because it's the right thing. Mm-hmm. Don't do it because you're going to get a reward. Right. Don't do it because you want your 15 minutes of fame. Right. Treat the person as though you want to be treated. Right. And if everyone could could manage that mm-hmm. seemingly insignificant act, yeah. the world would be a better place. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. All right. I'm done on my soapbox. <laughs> Getting off the soapbox. Um, so that's it for entertainment news. <laughs> that is it for entertainment. We will be back with our insightful picks of the week. Sure will. To you, my dear. So I was very excited this week. Uh, my insightful pick uh, is actually a series that I have been watching from the beginning, and it is American Horror Story. Yay! Um, so American Horror Story is an anthology horror series that was created by Ryan Murphy and um, a, a Brad uh, Falcuck. Uh, and it's on uh, the basic cable network FX. Each season is basically a self-contained mini-series following a different set of characters and settings and a storyline uh, with its own beginning, middle, and end. Uh, some plot elements do kind of inspire true events, um, and there were a couple of seasons that didn't really overlap, but there were hints from one season that kind of came out you know, in another season. So so it's one of those where you don't necessarily have to have watched 
uh, every season to kind of get it because, again, each season is kind of done uh, on their own. Um, so I have friends who, you know, they watch the first season, they didn't watch the second, but they watch the third. So they kind of, you know, go in and out. Um, so the first season was subtitled uh, Murder House, and it took place in Los Los Angeles, California during 2011, and it centers around a family that moves into a house that is haunted by its deceased former occupants. The second season, which was subtitled Asylum, takes place in Massachusetts in 1964 and follows the story of patients and the staff of an institution for the criminally insane. The third season, which was Coven, takes place in New Orleans during 2013 and follows a coven of witches who face off against those who wish to destroy them. The fourth season was uh, Freak Show, and it takes place in Juniper, Florida during 1952 and centers around one of the last remaining American freak shows and the struggle for survival. The fifth season was Hotel, and that took place in Los Angeles, California during 2015 and focuses on the staff and guests of a supernatural hotel. The sixth season, which really wasn't one of my favorites, was Roanoke uh, that took place in North Carolina during the years of 2014 and 2016, focuses on the paranormal events that take place at an isolated farmhouse that is haunted by deceased Roanoke. deceased Roanoke colony. Uh, the seventh season also, which wasn't this one for me, season, uh, seven was definitely like the creepiest one, uh, which was subtitled, uh, the cult takes place in a fictional suburb of Michigan in 2017 and centers around a cult that is terrorizing the residents of the aftermath of the 2016 election. The eighth season, which was Apocalypse, featured the return of witches from Coven and the battle of the Antichrist from Murder House in an attempt to prevent the apocalypse. And the ninth season, which actually just aired uh, this week, is subtitled 1984 and is a throwback to all of the Thrasher uh, uh Thrasher movies of the 1980s and is so well done. There's, they've only had one uh, episode. I actually watched it today and it's so 1984. It's hysterical. Like the clothes, right. even the the intro to the show, like the, the titles and everything. If you pull out a video from 1984, it like matches exactly like they're all doing aerobics in the beginning and, you know, the hair, the clothes, just, you know, everything. And what I love is that they, um, you know, they reuse a lot of the same cast in different um, in different roles. So, you know, in one season you know, this character might be a good person and the next season they're, you know, the evil person. So it's interesting to see, you know, where people are going to pop up. Um, There's usually always like guest stars that pop in and out, um, you know, because they never really reveal the whole cast, you know, until the season keeps going on. Um, So it's, if you're into horror, like I am, because of course I'm the only one that will watch it here. Nobody will watch it with me. Um, And what's kind of funny is there were a couple of seasons where I wouldn't watch it when it aired at at 10 o'clock at night. I'd have to watch it like the next day during the daytime because it was it was pretty scary, you know, for uh, a show uh, that's on, you know, basic cable at, at 10 o'clock at night. Um, but again, it, if you're a fan, the, so far this season looks looks really good. Definitely has that, you know, Friday the 13th kind of, you know, feel to it with, you know, some quirky little, you know, humor thrown in uh, as well. So nice. Nice. All right. Cool pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is a Netflix documentary called Inside Bill's Brain. Take a trip inside the mind of Bill Gates as the billionaire opens up about who's who about those who influenced him and the audacious goals he's still pursuing. Uh, This three part docuseries explores the mind and motivations of the celebrated tech visionary, business leader and philanthropist. It tells Bill Gates' life story as he pursues solutions to some of the world's most complex problems. 
Bill speaks about his life or death mission to get better sanitation to the developing world. Also, his sisters share their childhood memories of him. Uh, they talk about the connections that uh, shaped Bill's life. Uh, they come into focus, including a childhood friendship and his unique bond with Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen. Uh, then the third episode talks about the search for climate change solutions, uh, which requires a lot of passion, resources, and a sense of urgency. Three qualities that Bill Gates clearly possesses. So the show itself is, it's basically a marketing <laughs> tool for Bill Gates. Okay. Um, Come buy a Surface Pro. It's, it's not even <laughs> that. It's one of these, you know, it, it, it's, it's trying to glorify Bill Gates. Okay. It was done entirely with his cooperation. Mm -hmm. It was not objective. You know, it, it, none of none of the, I've watched the first two episodes. I haven't watched the third yet, but so far they've not touched on any of the negative aspects of Bill other than to talk about how those negative aspects allowed him to be so successful. Uh, so it's basically, you know, trying to, to polish the legacy of, you know, he's ha had significant accomplishments, mm -hmm. but right. they haven't come without cost. Um, and this second episode that I just watched, they had talked about the relationship he had with Paul Allen and the fallout that they had. Mm -hmm. And even that they glossed over and okay. didn't talk about any really negative things there. So it's, it's a very skewed view of Bill Gates's life. Um, it's worth a watch because okay. some of the things that they get into now are really some of the things that made him who they are. So one of the things that they do <clears throat> is they look at a challenge from his past and they relate it to a challenge now. So whether it's uh, reverse engineering the, the source code for the Altair or whether it was, you know, producing software um, before Microsoft even existed to accomplish problems, they take that and how he accomplished those goals and they apply it to a lot of his philanthropic, uh, philanthropic uh, endeavors now mm -hmm. with uh, sanitation okay. and um, uh, polio vaccines. Okay. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's designed to showcase all the good things he's doing now. Okay. Um, and the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is incredible in the amount of work that they've done mm -hmm. um, for developing countries and, and the general population. Um, so I'm almost willing to give them a pass on the one-sided aspect of the documentary because, if again, this is one of those things mm -hmm. where – if it can serve to inspire other people to volunteer, to help someone out, to treat someone better, then I'm willing to give you a pass on the fact that it's not entirely objective. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They're very well done. They use mm -hmm. a lot of great stock footage. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia. You know, for someone who grew up with computers like right. I did, there's a lot of flashbacks there that bring me back to my youth. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a it's a well done documentary. It's not Ken Burns, because um, <laughs> the new Ken Burns one you won't watch. But I I haven't yet, but we'll see. Even uh, if you so just watch like ten minutes of it, just to Inside yeah. Bill's Brain is streaming now. It's a three part limited series on Netflix. Uh, that's all I had. I think we'll come back with some afterthoughts. Sure. All right. What do we want to talk about? Uh, so last weekend we went to RetroCon, which is a little local uh, toy show slash uh, 80s kind of convention that they ha uh, hold in Oaks, PA. Mm -hmm. uh, this was, I think, our second year yes. going to it. Um, and we were supposed to have a little video, but we didn't get around to it. So maybe we'll... 
do it and put it on our Facebook page or maybe something. Maybe it'll show up in post production. Or maybe it will, and we can just say, "Hey, look." We'll at just that. just look for it after the credits. We'll wink, say. wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but anyway, one of the things uh, that's great when you go to some of these shows is that they have postcards and advertisements for all of the upcoming ones. Um, so we'll, and for our podcast now. And for our podcast now, <laughs> we actually put out we have nice little cards. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw these dates out there. Uh, some of the locations. Um, and again, we'll post it on the Facebook page for anybody that's in you know, the area. You can obviously probably do a, a Google search and find some of them. So, and just for the record, we are not getting paid to endorse any Right, of we're these. not. This these are just, just for you know, a benefit. lot of people are, are always like, oh, when's, you know, when's the next one do you know of and whatever. So this was just kind of our, our PSA yep. of, hey, if you happen to be in the area. Uh, so World Oddities Expo uh, in Baltimore is November 1st through the 3rd. Um, tomorrow, so obviously this one's going to kind of not work uh, by the time we post our uh, podcast on Monday, is the Central Jersey Comic Con, uh, which is, takes place in Bordentown. I'm guessing it's probably a yearly thing. So if you're in that area, you know, look to see dates for, for next year. Um Toy Con New Jersey is November 9th and 10th up in North Jersey in Parsippany. Out in Hershey, Pennsylvania at the Hershey Lodge for next year, August 22nd, is the Hershey Action Figure and Toy Show. Uh, again, that's held at the Hershey Lodge. Um, then coming up October 20th in Manasquan is the Jersey Shore Toy Show. Um, they are also doing a holiday show on November 18th and December 16th in the same location in Manasquan, New Jersey. Uh, then one of our favorite locations, uh, the Neur Shrine Center in Delaware, uh, they're doing their, De uh, their Delaware train show on October 5th. And then the October Fest toy show is the next day on October 6th. And they even have their train show uh, dates for next year, which is March 28th. And the April Fool's toy show is March 29th. And that's a great show we always like to go to. There's yeah. always something. There's always something we've, we've, obscure. We've uh, profiled on the podcast, actually. Mm -hmm. that's what yeah, we went yeah, to, we so. did. Yeah, so. There's always a good find there. I never mm -hmm. walk away without something there. I yeah, think. and today we actually went to the Merchantville uh, Town Toy Fair, I guess. Is, uh, more flea markety. Open air flea market. Uh, open air flea market. Toy focus. Yeah, uh, so they close off uh, one of the main street areas. I think it's Park. Avenue or Park uh, Place, uh, they close it down, and they have vendors on, on either side. Um, and this was actually our second year going to it. Um, it's funny, one of the guys that we met there last year who was there again, we saw him... Uh, what was the other one that we went it was to? Down that was towards the shore. Yeah, it was one of the the other shows the that we really went to. Hot ones. Yeah, that one was really <laughs> hot one. And this guy, he doesn't have um his own store. He basically just does this as a as a hobby. He has a full time job. Yeah. He doesn't have a website. He doesn't have you know. He basically goes job to you know location to location. And as soon as you walked in, he was like, "I don't have any more expand stuff." You yeah. bought all you know like he and that's what's kind of cool when you go to these events is just that fellowship yeah, of... it's a community. And, you know, like, hey, I don't have this, but I got, you know, hey, I got this Star Wars yep. thing, or, you know... You know and we had, we had a merchant that we used to see at uh, Wizard World, World Philly right. and uh, Monster Mania. Right, and, right. And, you know, if there was stuff that I was looking for, I would tell him, and he traveled up and down the East Coast, and if he found what I was looking for... He'd kind Next of hold show, on. He yeah. showed up. He'd have yeah. it for me, and I'd buy it from yeah, him. Yeah, so. so that was that, that. That's always, I think, the cool part is when we see vendors that you know that yeah we recognize, but that end up recognizing. Yep. Uh, so that again, you know, yeah. uh, is, is because cool. I never get recognized. I, I'm I just blend <laughs> into the crowd. Right, big bald guy with a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah, because there's not too many of those that that walk around. But yeah, so it was it was a good day. We had a, a couple of interesting little finds. Uh, it was kind of funny because I think we walked the whole thing, and it was literally the last. Yeah, last one or two. Uh, the last like tent that we got to that I we ended my... up. Got my last remaining 
Darth Vader samurai figure I was looking right, for. Right, and I ended up getting some weirdly obscure Disneyland... 1960s fold-up playset. Yeah, yeah. fold-up for five bucks. Yeah. Like, you know... The you, deals are out there if yeah, you know how to look yeah, for Yeah, so, them, it, you know, if you're, you're into that kind of thing, um, of course, we have no room in our house to actually... Put yeah, any of this stuff. We're working on that. Yeah, we're working on yeah. it, and maybe at some point we'll actually do a video of of all our stuff. I think so that, that would our be a cool idea. our our viewers can can see we'll how a, crazy we'll we do a collectibles special. Right there, you go. That sounds so. like a good future episode. Anyway, I think that is all we have for this week. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go, I will plug our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. Or you could catch us on YouTube at uh, www.youtube.com backslash insights into things. Or you can get us on our website at website <laughs> www.insightsintothings.com you know it would help if you actually put these in the order and this is this is like a test this is i just want to make oh, sure okay. you're paying attention okay. anyway check Twitter? us out well i wasn't going to throw them all out there oh once. okay fine but you could email us at comments at insightsintothings.com too. yeah could do that too so we, we love getting feedback so anyway that's it for this week it is another one in the books we'll catch you guys next week have a good week everyone bye bye, bye.